Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Man, after last night, it seemed like the uh, the sky was falling from rain. It rained so hard. I mean, it poured severe thunderstorm warnings and everything else. And now it looks like the sun is rising again, although we're supposed to have uh, some severe thunderstorms later on today. Um, that might tampen the spirits a little bit here at the Super Bowl. But I got to tell you, I'm tired, man. I can't wait to, to get finished and get back to home and get back to work and my workshop and Michael Anthony and the house and things like that. It's been, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining, but it's been crazy. I think I spent seven hours in the car yesterday just sitting in traffic. I, I don't think I drove more than 40 miles and spent seven hours in the car. So, you know, it's just one of those things. But um, tomorrow, it's the Super Bowl. The whole NFL season comes down to one day. It's been great being down here. We'll be down at NFL Experience. In fact, as soon as I get done with this video, we're heading downtown. Um, we'll be there. Well, it, the doors open 10 to 10. To, 10 to 10. 10 to 10. And uh, we'll be there from about... 8.30 on until about 10.30 tonight and then tomorrow at the game so we'll be bringing you some more coverage I think today I'm going to set my tripod up and I'm just going to stand there and I'm going to just start doing street interviews inside NFL Experience so if you're down there maybe we'll get you on, maybe we'll do it live that's what we'll do, we'll do a live stream from NFL um, Super Bowl Experience, that, that might be fun so the 2019 season is coming to a close the great thing is that, I guess, not great thing, the great thing would be is if we were here at the Super Bowl, you know. I saw Jerry Jones last night and um, said to him, I said, Jerry, you know, Jerry, I, I end the season every year right here with you, man. I'm like, we need to get to the Super Bowl. He rolled my eyes like, and look, with the look that, tell me something I don't know, son. Tell me something I don't know. I think we have made a great start in pointing us in that direction. I think if we only get, here's the thing, the difference between winning and losing in football is that much. You can literally take almost any game, even some blowout games, and you can point to about five plays or less that are the difference in winning or losing. That's it. The difference of winning or losing. I'll give you a great example. New England. Had we not had the punt blocked, I believe we win that game. That's the difference. That gave New England a short field, easy touchdown. And that was the difference that game. And Minnesota. Had we not missed the field goal, instead of us getting down there with uh, running Zeke two times at the middle, it would have been okay running him up the middle because all we would have needed was a field goal in the end to win. It's literally the difference of a play or two that can be the difference of winning or losing. And had you had a couple, if, if I, I guarantee you, I could go through the season, if we had five plays differently, the Dallas Cowboys could have been like 11 and five. And we'd have a totally different conversation about the Dallas Cowboys this off season. In fact, I'll do that exercise. Um, I, when I get back home, I, I will sit, sit there and I'll say five plays that would have changed the season and had us 11 and 5. And if we had ended up 11 and 5, everybody would have looked at the season totally different. Oh my God. Cowboys were a great team. They're set up for next year to do great things because of a few plays. Instead, we're 1 and 6 in one score games. And see, if you can get just a little bit, just a little bit more out of your coaching, just a little bit better play calling, play design, getting the defense to not be where you're going to go. That'll make a difference. If we can get the wide receivers, instead of dropping 43 passes, maybe only drop 23, that'll make a difference. If we can get the defense, instead of giving up 4.6 yards, over the center every time a team runs the ball. Maybe you give up three and a half. 
Those are differences that make a difference. If you don't have the worst field goal kicker in the NFL and the worst statistically every single category of special teams, just that little bit will make a difference in the team. It's not that the Dallas Cowboys are a team that can't play and can't compete. They had second most yardage, I believe, in the NFL. Or, I'm sorry, first amount of yardage in the NFL. Your quarterback up there, 30 TDs. When you look at it, you're not that far away. And if you can retain some of those players that are key, if you can get a few more that have a little impact and you have a draft that actually gives you a punch out the gate, all of a sudden you're looking a lot better. Now, our division, let's face it, the Redskins are bottom feeders. The Giants are bottom feeders. The Eagles, even though they got the division, is an aging team with a quarterback who sometimes <clears throat> doesn't always stay healthy. It's not like they're a juggernaut that's right there. That division is wide open. Now, I didn't want to do this. I, I tried to get away from this kind of stuff because we have such a diverse crowd of people in here. But I got to start bringing back the dumbass comment of the day. And I don't know if it's that people who are maybe just casual fans and don't understand the difficulties that there are out there in football, you know, the ins and outs and things and um, so forth. Or if it's people that are looking to get a reaction or, you know, a comment and stuff or to rally it up or maybe even a video made about them. But we just got to bring back that dumbass comment of the day because, well, let's face it, there are really some dumbass comments out there. And the dumbass comment of the day today is franchise tag Dak Prescott. If he bulks, cut his ass fast. Don't waste no time. Just cut him. Cut him. Cut him. And then just draft another quarterback in the third, fourth round. You'll be fine. Anybody else think that's a wise thing to do? Thumbs up on that one or anything? Or do you agree with me that that is about the dumbest thing you can do? At least, at least okay, fine. I get it. It, it, it. Let's at least look at it. Let's dissect this problem a little bit right here. Hypothetically, the fact that you got a guy in the fourth round who you may have to consider using a franchise tag on is unbelievable. But do you want to go the route of the Washington Redskins who franchise tagged Kirk Cousins two years, paid $45 million, and then he walked away and you got nothing for him? At least you would put a transition tag on him. At, at very least, it'll end up being lower compensation for the player. But at least if somebody wants him, You'd at least get some draft compensation. At least, I, 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 I don't agree with using either of them, but at least, hypothetically, that would be a better way to go because you don't want to let a caliber player like Dak Prescott just leave and you have nothing to replace him. Just from that off standpoint alone. Now, if you want to say, we can draft another quarterback, I got to tell you that we have been spoiled as Dallas Cowboy fans because... We ended up getting Tony Romo, an undrafted free agent, who ended up playing extremely well. And then followed up by lucking out and getting a guy that you really didn't target. Because understand, you know, we had went to looking at Carson Wentz at the Senior Bowl, okay? They, they wanted to trade up and tried to trade up to get Paxton Lynch. I believe he's playing next Saturday in the uh, XFL. This was just kind of like, well... He's here in the fourth round. You know, he can be a backup, but we'll take a shot on him. And you lucked out and got that guy. That doesn't mean that you're going to find a whole lot of quarterbacks in the fourth round. Take a good look around the NFL. How many great quarterbacks do you see that are picked in the third and fourth round? There's a couple. 
but it's not very many and it's not like one of those comes along every year you can look at the top drafted quarterbacks first round picks how many of those guys have been stiffs quarterbacks just don't grow in trees and I had a conversation yesterday because we have so many people that say if we had only had Tom Brady last year you know we'd been in the Super Bowl well Sorry to disappoint you, we wouldn't have. But I'll tell you, how about this? Let's play a little exercise. What if Tom Brady had played on the Dallas Cowboys last year? Okay. Do you really believe that the Dallas Cowboys, as it was currently consistent, would have won the Super Bowl? Yes or no? I don't think so. Let's take the reverse of that do you think if the Dallas Cowboys took our offense and put it in New England with that defense do you think we would have gone deeper at least in the playoffs than what New England did losing in the first round I do I think with the offense that the Dallas Cowboys had with that special team group and that defense they've been in the Super Bowl I can't say if you took New England's offense and put it down here with the Dallas Cowboys that they would have been. Sorry. And that's the way you got to look at it. But then again, what do I know? I am just a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll who's down here trying to cover the Super Bowl. All right. That's all I got to say about that. And I hope you guys have a great day. hope you follow along. I um, hope you've enjoyed the content we've tried to bring you. Super Bowl coverage, a little different than everybody else. And I know as a Cowboy fan, you don't really don't really want to watch the Super Bowl because we're not in it. I get that. I mean, that's like watching your best friend out with a, a supermodel. Well, that's great for him. But I'm just sitting here by myself. But don't worry, guys. It's going to get better. See you at Super Bowl Experience.